a miracle in your mouth, a miracle in your word. I am Charity, you guys. This is Faith and Hope with Charity. I thank you for joining me here today on allpointstv.com. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's a beautiful day out there. So, so I hope you guys are listening in and getting filled with some word. And then maybe you can go out and, and enjoy a little bit of the sunshine and, and maybe touch somebody else's life and, and move on their heart. Amen. So before I get going in the word today, the Lord, you know, I always seem to sometimes have a plan going or something I'm going to talk about or want to talk about. But, but we have to let God's Holy Spirit guide us. We have to let his word and what he wants to go forth go out. So he changed it all up on me this morning. And I'm going to talk to you guys about giving no place to the enemy, giving no place to the enemy, to the strongholds that he brings in our life and in our mind. Amen. But before we get going, I just want to remind you guys of the websites. It's keepingfaithinyourears.com. Keepingfaithinyourears.com. You guys can go there and there's some word on there, whatever the Lord puts in my heart. And uh, you can also comment back. I think it's like a blog type page. And then we have jamforjesus.org, which is listed right here above my head. That's going to list you guys any revivals that are going on, any functions. There's pictures, there's videos, all kinds of things there. And there's also a little PayPal button. If the Lord moves on you and your heart to, to help us spread the word and to donate to the Fivefold Ministries and to help us here at allpointstv.com, there's a little button there that you can push and you can make your donation that way. But pray about it. Let the let the Lord move on your heart. And if he wants you to give, you will. Amen. We don't, we, we're all nonprofit here and we do have little things that we can give back to as well because we ourselves give into the ministry. Because, you know, as his word says, what do we need more than the food? in the clothes you know we're to store not up treasures on this earth but treasures in heaven because we are all truly here for just a short short very short period of time amen so praise the lord for that so we're going to start off with prayer today if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open it up to Ephesians chapter 4 or your smartphones uh, if you follow your Bible on there, which I do because I have the Concordance Bible in there, which will give the Hebrew and the Greek meaning as well. So open those up and we're going to go to Ephesians and then just open your heart to God. Let it be his Holy Spirit that minister to you today, that his word go through me and that it touches you and that it opens our eyes and our hearts because we all have to meditate on his word day and night like he says. We have to renew our mind in his word so that our mind doesn't get corrupt by other men's words and the things that this world is throwing out at us because our words are so, so important and they will direct our lives. So I'm going to say a quick prayer and then we'll get going in the word of God today. So Heavenly Father, we just come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for this day, Father God. We thank you for your mercy and your grace, Lord. We thank you for the cross, Father. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Lord. We ask that you let it guide us and direct us as we go through your word today, Father God. We ask that it minister to our hearts and open our ears and our spiritual eyes, Father God, to your word and your truth. That everybody watching today, Father God, that you touch them, that they feel your presence around them, Lord. And we just give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's get right in, you guys. Go with me to Ephesians 4 because I'm going to talk to you about giving no place to the enemy because as I was reading this morning I was up in Kings and and the Lord was showing me a verse about um living in a good land yet it's dry there's no bread there there's no water and he you know talking about the people because we've allowed the strongholds of the enemy of the accuser of the brethren of the devil to come in and take control in our lives and there are many people who have these strongholds in their lives and it's controlling them, it's controlling everything in their lives. And it is a satanic stronghold. And it is. The Word of God says that it is. And they have it in their heart. They have it in their mind. It's it's manifested into their life. It controls everything. So not only is it harming them and, and, it, and it's wrecking their spiritual life. It's, it's, it wrecks their spiritual life with God, but it also then affects everyone around them. It affects everyone around them. It can affect your children. It can affect your family. It can affect church even. When you assemble together and break bread and, and share in the word of the Lord, it can affect that situation as well. And the devil, you know, um, if he's found a place to make a net, you know, he talks about nets and things in, in the Bible all the time. And if he's found a place that he can make a web, a, a place to control, he will do it by any means possible. 
And then he will use any means possible to keep you in that net, to keep you stuck in that web of lies and that web of deceit. And he'll use a stronghold to war against you. Even once, if the stronghold's got you, he's going to use it to continually war against you. It's, he's going to use it continually to war against God, against the work that God has called you to do, against keeping you from his word. Because so many of us so, or feel so condemned or so controlled or, or whatever it is that we won't even read the word of God because the enemy is saying, well, you're not good enough. Well, look at what you did and, and things like that. So you've got to be wise. This is why he says, be wise as a serpent, but gentle as a dove. We have to know God's word. We have to understand what he's saying to us. Because the, the Bible, yes, it's carnal words, but they're spiritual meaning. Because we're going to put off this flesh. This flesh, when I mean, it's revealed in the New Testament, is a veil. This is just skin. This is just a covering to the spirit of God that's on the inside of us to the oracles that are underneath your fingertips that you lift unto the Lord your God in reverence. He says, I've given you all things. It's yours. Why are we arguing and strifing over this? It's all yours. But where does our praise and our honor go to? Amen. So let's turn to Ephesians 4.27. Ephesians 4.27 with me, you guys. It says, neither give place to the devil. That's the whole scripture. And when I read that, I thought, wow, that's good, Lord, because we give place. Even if it's a small little place of doubt in your mind or fear or whatever, we give him the place. He says, neither give don't give it to him. Give no place to the devil. Who's the devil? He's the accuser. He is the accuser of the brethren. He says, give no place to him. We got to take notice of God's word because one verse that we've read over and over and over and over and over but then all of a sudden his spirit says, ah, look at that. Every single place in our lives have no place for the devil. None at all. And then down in verse 30, and I'm only giving you this because I want you guys to see the comparison here as well. Because he says, and grieve. And grieve means be, be not sorrowful or distressed. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. What is that saying to us? What is that saying? The Holy Spirit of God dwells on the inside of us. He's saying, grieve not my spirit. Give no place to the enemy in your life, in your mind, in your thoughts. Do not allow things to manifest because words do create. How can you do anything at all? How can you do anything if you're bogged down? If you're bogged down with strongholds of fear, bogged down with strongholds of, of distress, of sorrow, he says, give no place to the devil, to the accuser of the brethren. And every time you look up devil in the Bible, if you look up the Greeks or the, the Hebrew concordance, it's all the accuser of the brethren, the evil one. The one with the slandering mouth. He says, give no place to the devil. It is a spiritual battle that we're in and our words create. They are spiritual. So if we're giving place to the devil in our lives, whether we're speaking it out or we're allowing it in, we've got to give no place to the devil. Because what are God's plans for you? What does God say that his plans for you are? If you're living and any of this, and you're grieving the Holy Spirit of God that dwells on the inside of you. Do we know what God's plans are for us? His word tells us in Jeremiah what they are. And I'm going to take you guys to that verse real quick and I'll read it. You don't have to flip to it or, you know, this is aired live as well, you guys. So you can always go back on YouTube at all points TV and watch it later and stop it. We, we just know that the word of God never, ever comes back void, even if it's for one person today it's worth it we're all worth it jesus christ said every single one of you are worth me dying for 
So go with me to Jeremiah and let's see what he says there because I want you to know what God's plans are for you. We have to read his word because his word is what cleanses us, what reminds us, cleanses our mind from the corruption of other men's words or from what the world is trying to throw at us. Because what are God's plans for you? Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us very plainly. It says, for I know the thoughts I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, not of evil, to give you an expected end. He sent Jesus Christ. So we don't have to live under that no longer. Doesn't mean that we're gonna be perfect because all men sin and fall short of the glory, but we are children of God. We are saved by Christ. We don't have to live in that anymore. We have the written word of God that we can pull up and renew in every single day so that the devil has no place in our life, in our mind, and in our thoughts. Because he said, I know the thoughts. We got to think about these things. We've got to stop giving place to the enemy. Because some people have even laid out a welcome mat. They, they've laid out a place, a, a, a welcome mat. They've created a, an environment that has allowed the devil, the accuser of the brethren, to grow and manifest in a situation. And it may seem huge. It may just seem like this situation, this stronghold, whatever it is, is so big that you, you can't do nothing about it. You've just got to deal with it. Well, no, you don't. <laughs> and some people have so ordered their lives, they've allowed or even created the situation themselves just from speaking lies, fearing, because that's what causes it. I'm going to go over that with you guys in just a minute as well. It, it, that, that will make the devil feel at home. So some of us create situations where we've made him feel right at home. He is in control. He's the one controlling everything. You don't have the control. Your control is this. Bowing down. Give no place to the devil. What does he do? He causes fear. He causes doubt. He causes unhappiness. He causes us to hurt one another. What's going on in our world today? What are we doing? Why? This country is founded one nation under God. Where is it going? Where are the men going? Where are the women going? Because in Genesis, he says, in the beginning created he them. And in the day that he created them, he called their name Adam. Their. So it is women and men allowing this to go on. It's all of us, and we've got to turn. We've got to turn because the devil's going to keep you bogged down instead of receiving what God has for you, and he wants to keep you in misery so that you don't go out and do as God has called you to do. So that you're stuck in, in a box. I mean, I, I've been there where you just feel like you're in this little box and there's absolutely nothing you can do. When the Lord called me to do this show, I sat back, I'm like... I no, I can't do that. I can't. No, no, no. So many people, you know, people look at you and they do judge. But when you realize the truth, God will show you. He will confirm it. And, and he said to me the same thing he says to all. I will teach you. My Holy Spirit will show you all truths. I will put my words inside of your mouth. You are my child. I love you. And that's what he's saying to those out there today. None of us are perfect. We've all fall short, and, uh, short of the glory of God. You know, I'll just share personal thoughts. At the time, I thought, Lord, I've been through two divorces. I've got this going on. I've done, you've done. God forgives us if we're true in our heart in repentance. He knows our heart. See, we think we can hide from God. We think we can hide underneath something. We think, well, we can hide from our parents or we can hide from our friends or we can hide from this or we can hide from that lie. You might hide from them, but we cannot hide from God. 
We cannot hide from God. He says, I know man's heart. Jesus even tells us in the New Testament, I know what's in man. He knows our heart. He knows our thoughts. So we think we're hiding from him, but we're not. He knows everything. And Satan can never take ground in our life or our mind that we don't give him. That we don't give him. He can never take anything that we don't hand over, that we don't give him. We got to give it to him for him to be able to control us, for him to be able to condemn us, right? Do you not have control over your own mind and your own body and what you do? Sure you do. This is where he talks about, I call ye little gods. It doesn't mean you are the God, but I've given you authority. I've given you ability. I've given you a choice. I've given you a mind and I've given you a free will, saith the Lord. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. That's in his word. He says, but as for me and my house, this is our house. We shall serve the Lord thy God. I shall follow what his word says I should do and what his word says about me. So we've got to start thinking because Satan is not greater than our Lord. The accuser of the brethren who's attacking you and telling you you're no good and you owe and you, he's not greater than your Lord because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he. Satan has no right. He has no authority. He has no right. He has no authority. He has no place unless you're giving it to him. Who are you giving your authority over to? Who are you giving the right to control your peace and your joy and your love and your... Who are you giving it to? Are you giving it to God who just told us, I know the thoughts I have for you to give you peace and joy and love and happiness? Or are you giving it to the devil? Because we all know what the devil came for, what the accuser comes for. Right? I'm going to share with you where that's at. That's in... in the New Testament as well in just a minute. And this is why the word of God warns us. This is why he warns us right here in Ephesians 4, 27. To give no, no place at all to the devil. He says no place, zero. Give no place to the devil. Zero. So then we got to ask as well, you know, as I was sitting there and I'm praying and I'm writing this stuff down and I'm like, well, where are most strongholds? Where do most strongholds begin? Right here. Right here in our mind. Most strongholds, and I'm, I'm almost to say all, will begin right here in our mind. The devil accuses us. <laughs> he uses doubt. He uses fear. He uses condemnation, our past mistakes, knowing that we aren't perfect, so that doesn't make sense. But we allow him to have that power over us. Every single one of us have made mistakes. Every single one of us. But we, for some reason, why? We're not renewing in the word of God. We're not letting God tell us that you are forgiven and free, that you've come to me in repentance and a true heart, and I don't remember it anymore. You are in Christ Jesus now. My mercy, my grace, he tells Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. See, Paul was questioning. I used to attack and I used to imprison people and I used to beat them down and bog them down and do all of this and now I'm going to go out and I'm going to tell them about Jesus Christ, about the grace. And God told Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. So don't let the devil put thoughts in your mind. Don't let him accuse you. You can't can't the devil wants to demean your spirit he wants you to just feel so down he wants your mind to continually race with all your mistakes and all you've done and oh how can you sure we've made mistakes you ask for forgiveness then if that person chooses to forgive or not then that's in their heart god will deal with them but where's your heart did you ask for forgiveness did you truly mean it? And now have you asked God? 
It's that simple. And then we allow the enemy to let us carry it around. Because once you've given place to the devil, once you've given place to him, he then controls. Which is why the Bible tells us in Romans 12, if you guys want to go there, it's Romans 12, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. He doesn't say the renewing of your flesh. He doesn't say the renewing of, I got to go get, I got to get, I got to get, I got to get all that. He says the renewing of your mind. He doesn't say, I got to go serve, I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to do that, now I got to. He says, renew your mind. You got to be transformed here. You've got to renew your mind. And then in Proverbs 4 20 through 22, it says, Incline to my saying, do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Now listen to why and what they are. He's talking about his word, his saying to you. Listen to what he says they are. They are life to those that find them. And then health to your flesh. Do you know when you walk around in sickness, and in, in sickness can be just a, a condemnation in your mind and constant fear and doubt and worry and all of this. It kills that very flesh that you're walking around in. It makes you physically ill. I've seen people. I'm a nurse. I've been a nurse for 15 years, and I've seen people. They even have what's called broken heart syndrome. There's no explanation other than they have allowed a situation, a death, or something else that's gone on to totally control and consume them. They've allowed bitterness in. They let it control their lives. They let it control their mind. They let it control their happiness. And it will affect your physical body. It will. This is why he's telling us, incline to my saying, do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. They are life to all those that find them and health to their flesh. So what is he saying? Words matter. They create. Words matter. What are you listening to? What are you allowing in your mind? What are you reading? What are you letting in your eyes? Are you listening to the devil and the accuser of the brethren? Or are you listening to God? These are important questions that, that we've got to ask ourselves on a personal level. Because as I said, it, it affects every situation in our lives. See, God wants a personal relationship with us. He isn't saying, okay, the five of you come together and now I want a relationship with the five of you, just you five, or I want it. He wants it personal. He says, I want it with each and every single child. Every one of my children. Just as we do with our own. You want that relationship, right? And it's a different relationship with each of them. It doesn't mean you love them any different. You love them all just as much. But you have a little different relationship with this child and a different relationship with this child. And, and it seems to be easier that you can talk with this child and, and that child communes with you a little bit easier. And then this child's just a little bit more defiant and this child's a, you know, a little bit more mouthy or whatever. Do you see what I'm saying? It's a relationship with him. And he wants that personal relationship. And we cannot change without renewing in his word. And it's got to come from the inside out. And we cannot fear and let the accuser stop us from having that. We can't let him do that. And I'm going to give you some ways that, that we do this. Because we have to do these things. Because this is what the Word of God says. And I can tell you that the Word of God is tried, tested, and proven. It is a buckler to all those that use it. And I've used it in my life. I lived 30-some years of my life serving others in fear and doubt. But now I have peace every day. I have joy of the Lord. I sing to him continually because he is so good because him and his word is what's led me to that. By listening to him, by walking through the fear, by walking through the doubt, by walking through the attacks of, of those that I even loved, people that I cared about, that I respected, 
This is why we can trust no man but God alone. Because first we must, let's go to Ephesians 4.22 because I want to read that to you guys and I want to talk to you about repentance because we have to repent, okay? So Ephesians 4.22 says that you put off concerning the former conversations. Wow. The former conversations. The old man, which is corrupt according to deceive a lust. I mean, what is that telling us? That our former conversations of agreeing with the enemy or agreeing with whoever, they're corrupt. They're corrupting the temple of God. They're corrupting your peace. They're corrupting your joy. They're corrupting your happiness. They're corrupting you from being able to go out and do as God has called you to do. They're corrupting you so that you don't hear his voice. They're corrupting you so that you're following this way and that way. And you're turning to the left and then you're turning to the right. You just don't know. God says, keep your eyes on me, stay in my word, keep your eyes on, I will direct you and guide you in this life and in the life to come. He doesn't want you walking around in, in all this sorrow and all this stuff and dying to, dying to self or dying to Christ. You know, people say, pick up your cross and follow me, but it's true joy, honestly. When, when you let go of the sin and all the things in your life that truly were bringing you trouble, people that were bringing you down, people that were constantly condemning you and whatever. It's, it's joy. You know, when people say the burden, there is no burden of the Lord. What burden? Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My yoke is light. It is peace. It is joy. It is love. The burden is comes from the enemy and in other people that want you to serve them, to serve the lies, to serve the fear, to serve the doubt. So we must repent, it says. Well, well, it doesn't say repent, but it says that ye put off. Now I want to read to you what put off means in the Greek. Because it means be done with it. <laughs> Be done with it. Cast off and lay down. Be done with it. The former conversations. Don't sit there with somebody and go over and over and over and over and over and over and over. What are you doing? You're, still, you're allowing it to control and condemn your life. You're allowing that to be what you're focused on instead of saying, you know what? I'm forgiven and free. God has forgiven me. I've asked for forgiveness. If you choose to hold it, you're going to hold it, but I'm going to keep going because I know the plans that God has for me. They're to give me peace. They're to give me love. They're to give me joy. Amen. We've got to start thinking on these things. And then what else does it say? We have to resist. We have to resist. We have to give no place to the devil, the accuser of the, the brethren. We have to resist it. We have to get out from under it. Whatever we have to do, he says, resist. James 4, 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. That's in James 4, 7. Resist, which means stand against or oppose. They're standing against you. They're opposing you, the truth of Jesus Christ. They're opposing. And, and we're afraid and we come down in this fear and, and we're afraid to resist the serpent's mouth because that's what a serpent is. I mean, if we want to get technical, uh, you know, 666 or whatever is the number of a man. Hmm. Who's a serpent? What is a serpent? It's a mouth constantly going, hissing, carrying on, attacking, attacking, going on. Bites you and it hurts because words hurt. Bite your back. They come from behind and they get you. Ouch. Stings. Stings here. See, they're carnal words with spiritual meaning. We have to give no place to the enemy because our battle is spiritual and it is not carnal and we are spiritual beings in a carnal body. 
We've got to start getting back to the truth, you guys, because we're going to leave this world. Now, if you choose to, to stay in condemnation and whatever while you're walking through this land, hey, that's your choice. But I'm going to choose to walk the way God says to walk. We got to start thinking it is man that attacks man. It is man that allows the enemy to control our lives. We've got to start thinking and we've got to resist the devil and he will flee from you. This is what James 4, 7 says. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. He won't like you standing up and he will bring more. Uh, maybe sometimes he'll bring more opposition or maybe sometimes he'll bring more attacks or he'll bring it from this way or he's going to come from every which way that he can. Every way. But God says resist, resist the devil because he's going to try to bring accusations, but you must resist him or he's going to overtake you. He's going to continue to control you in that area. You're going to continue to walk in lies and doubt and fear and all of these things. And third, you guys ready for this one? You've got to renew and remove. Renew and remove. Renew and remove. Because it says former conversations. Stop arguing with the devil. Stop arguing with the accuser. The Bible actually says, agree with your adversary quickly and move on. Lest he overtake you in some area. That's what the Word of God says. Stop listening to the lies and listen to what God says. Listen to what God says about you. What does he say about the situation that you're in? Are you living in sin? Are you living with someone you're not married to? That's a sin. Correct it. Renew and remove. Walk right, just, and true. There's a lot of things that, that we're continually, he says, work out thy own salvation, meaning work out these things in your lives. Get them out of your lives. Stay in my word. Fear not. I will help you. Of course, the devil's out there. He's like a lion. He's trying to come at you. He's trying to move you. He's trying to keep you in it, actually. Are you out there lying to people? Are you stealing? We have to remove those things. We have to remove them and we have to stop listening to the enemy. And in verse 23, he says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Renewed in the spirit of your mind. Verse 25. Now we're still in Ephesians, you guys. He says, put away lying. Put away lying. And I just told you what put away it is. Cast it off. Be done with it. Well, how do you do that? Well, why do we lie? Why do you lie? Why have I lied? Fear. Doubt. We're afraid. We're afraid of what they're going to say. We're afraid of what they're going to do. We're afraid. We're afraid. We're afraid. We're afraid. And we live in it. So then we lie. We lie about what we feel. We lie about what we believe. We lie about whatever it is because of fear. God says, fear not. He says, fear not. He says it over 80 times in the Bible. He says, I will take care of you, saith the Lord. Fear not, Goliath's mouth. Fear not the large mouths of those who are continually attacking and coming down. Fear not. For I have overcome the world, the Lord said. You know the truth. You're not going to stay in that flesh. That, you, that the Spirit is the truth. Let God be the truth and every man a lie. Everything in God's word has come to pass. And more will. What are you afraid of, he says. 
Don't you fear them. That's so temporary that you're there. Don't you let them do that to you. You are my child. My spirit dwells on the inside of you. You have nothing to fear. We have got to start reading his word. We've got to. He says, fear not Goliath's mouth. Put on the new man. Put on the new man. And then, then we must take those steps. We must take those steps. God's given you the authority and we must walk it out. We must listen to God, not the accuser of the brethren, the serpents coming at us. James 2.18 says, Faith without works is dead being alone. Do you believe in me, God says? If you believe in me, then why do you not do what my word says? Why do you not listen to my word? Why are you not in my word? And then doing what it says to do. I've given you the authority. I've given you the power. You have the right to move your feet. You have the authority. Don't give it to the devil. Don't give it to the accuser. Amen? James 3, 6. This is important, and, and the Lord wanted this to be out with you guys today. So James 3, 6. The tongue is a fire. What does fire do to us? Think about it. It consumes our flesh, it burns, it hurts. Think about all the things that fire does. When you touch it, ah, that hurts. <laughs> that hurts. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, setting on fire the course of nature. Setting on fire the course of nature. And this is why it's so important that he says, be mindful what you're allowing into your ears. Because if you meditate on that or you listen to it, it's going to start to come out of your mouth. And then that's what you've just set on fire over the course of nature. <laughs> you've given that authority over. You have the authority right there in your mouth. We got to start speaking God's words. What are you speaking? What are you letting others speak to you? If you notice that what they're speaking doesn't line up with God's word, I mean, you, you better move out from underneath of it because it will overtake you. Because lying as well, when we lie, it gives place to the devil. When we allow fear in and we allow it to consume us and we allow that to be what we're trusting in instead of God, that's why we lie. And then we lie. And we've just now given place for the devil in our lives. This is where fear is so consuming. I mean, fear is a, it causes us to lie. And then now we've sinned. We're lying. For what? We're afraid of somebody's mouth? We're afraid of the serpent's mouth? Do you see where I'm going with that, you guys? So whether it's, whether it's you or the accuser, you out of fear or the accuser to condemn and control you. They'll lie to you. You owe, oh, you're this, you're that, you're done. They'll lie to you to cause fear, condemnation, control. You can't, you're no good. You don't deserve it. God says, I will have mercy whom I will have mercy on. Man doesn't choose. God chooses. And in truth, he gave mercy upon us all when he set Jesus Christ, the fullness of his spirit in the flesh, for every single one of us to be saved. Don't let the enemy have place in your mind, in your heart, and then manifest it into your life. We've got to be wise as serpents. We have to be wise to what the enemy wants to bring at us. We have to be wise to his deceits. We have to be wise to the words. If you don't know God's word, the enemy is going to come and speak just a little bit of God's word. But then he's going to add his own to it. Or he's just going to twist it enough that you recognize, well, maybe that is God's word. But he's twisted it just enough that you're serving it. And it's a lie. It's a half-truth. I've done a show about half-truths before. 
We have to get into the word of God because we got to remember God wants peace for us. He wants joy. He wants love. He wants happiness. We're his children. He said, I've given you the earth and the fullness thereof. Do you think he gave it to us because he wants us to be condemned and bogged down? Do you think he gave us a heart to love someone because he doesn't want us to feel that? Do you think he did? Do you think he gave it to you so that someone else can tell you? No, he's given you the authority. You have a right to choose. So you have to base your life on the truth and fear not. Base your life on the truth and fear not. And you will go when God calls. When he says go, you will be ready to minister. Whether you're running into somebody driving down the road or whether you're running to, into somebody in the mall. Whether you're running into somebody at work. You remove all that fear and then you're going to serve the Lord thy God. And then in John 8, 44, Jesus said, The devil, the accuser, is a liar and the father of it. The devil is a liar and the father of it. So if we're walking around allowing fear or anything to control us and then we start to lie, what are we doing? Hmm. He's a thief. <laughs> Word of God says he's a thief, that he comes to steal. We can't live a lie. We can't believe a lie or submit to a lie. We have to trust in God and his word and not let men do that unto us. We cannot give any place to the enemy at all because God's word is the truth. His word is the truth. What does it say? Jesus said, I am the truth. That's in John 4. Uh, John 4, 16. Jesus said, I am the truth. You say you love me. Listen to my words. I am the truth. I am the truth. Well, actually, John 14. Sorry, John 14. I am the truth. So then I wrote down some other ones. It says, John 17, 7. Thy word is truth. This is Jesus. Thy word is truth. John 5, 7. Thy spirit is truth. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. Thy spirit is truth. How do we grieve his Holy Spirit? When we allow fear and condemnation and all these things in and then we sin and we start lying and doing things because we're fearing what man say and what man do. We can't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. The devil accuses you. He condemns you. He causes fear, doubt, and unbelief so that you fear and fear hath torment. You know, I sent a friend a scripture the other day the Lord put in my heart. And he says, yeah, perfect love casteth out all fear because fear hath torment. He that hath torment is not made perfect in love. So you know if you're tormented in your mind and you're fearing and all this is going on, you're not walking in love. You're walking in fear. You're walking in doubt. You're walking in torment. But God says, I know the plans and the thoughts that I think towards you. They're to prosper you. They're to make you have peace and joy and love and happiness, right? So that torment's here, you guys. The torment, I mean, it, sure, it can manifest into our flesh. And, and I'm talking about the torment of the flesh, but I'm talking about the torment that fear will bring to your mind. And then it will control your life. And then it steals your joy, it steals your love, and it steals your peace. Yes, it steals love. He says the verse I just read to you. It's in the book of John. Fear hath torment. And he that walketh in fear and torment hath not perfect love. <laughs> it steals it from you guys. You know, Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, John 10.10, 10, he said, The thief cometh not, but to steal and to kill. Kill what? Kill your spirit. 
Your flesh is already going to die. We know that. Sure, he wants to take your flesh, but he's talking about our spirit. The devil wants to kill your spirit, so you're walking in fear, you're walking in doubt. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. He wants to destroy all the plans that God has for you in this life and in the life to come. That's what the, that's what the enemy wants and, and the accuser of the brethren wants. Have you ever heard the saying, misery loves company? Well, what does that say? They want, they want other people in misery. They want you to serve. They want you condemned. They want you to... Eh, eh, eh. Think about these things. But then he says, Jesus says, but I am come that they might. That's an important word. They might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Why does he say might? Because we choose. We choose. We're either going to listen to the devil and let him kill, steal, and destroy our spirit and our mind and prevent us from going and doing as God says and prevent us from joy, prevent us from peace, prevent us from the love that he has for us. So we choose. Jesus said might here because you've got to choose. You have the authority to choose. But I'm here to tell you that once you leave this flesh, you don't have that authority to choose any longer. We're explaining that in the book of Luke. That right now, choose ye this day. Because once you leave that flesh, that veil that covers the spirit, you don't have a choice after that. There's a gulf fixed between. He explains about Lazarus and the rich man. It's done. done so we have to choose one way or the or one way or the other we are the ones that have to choose think about what, what the enemy steals kill and destroy what happened to the the man in 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 mark in chapter five when when he was living in the graveyard cutting himself with stones well what are stones we got to think spiritually here, you guys. Jesus Christ was the cornerstone, so we know we're talking spiritual. What is a stone? A stone here thrown at your mind, condemnation, fear, guilt, whatever it was. We just know that he was cutting his own self with stones. He was allowing the enemy to steal from him. To steal his mind, to steal his liberty and his freedom. This is what this man was doing. Stole his life, his joy, his health. He's living in a graveyard. He's living in death. He's living in spiritual death. He's living in death already, yet he's alive. Do you see that? When we look at God's word, we got to think spiritually. We got to let his Holy Spirit guide us. This was a man who was tormented by fear and doubt, letting the enemy steal everything. That he, he lived like he was already dead. He was just dead and done and, and cutting himself with all of it continually. But Jesus Christ said, I have set you free. I have come to show you the truth, that I am the truth, that I am the way, I am the life, I am the word. Every word I speak unto you is of the Father. You're his child. He loves you. Turn back unto him with your heart. Don't give place to the devil. Don't give him room in your life. We have to repent, right? We have to remove, number two. We have to resist. He says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist him and he will flee from you. Ephesians 63, 9. I'm just going to care, uh, share a couple scriptures with you guys. And I hope that the Lord touched your heart today because he touched me with it even this morning. We can't let or give any place to the devil anywhere. 
And we have to know his tricks because fear is a trick and it's a lie. And this is why he tells us over and over, fear is a lie because when we fear, then we're going to go lie. We're going to do this. We're going to do that because we're allowing fear to control us. And then that fear itself has now caused us to sin because we've allowed it to take place in our lives. Isaiah 63, 9, 63 nines, because Jesus Christ is the way. It says, in all their afflictions, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. The angel of his presence. We know that the very presence was inside of Jesus Christ, shedding forth the truth. In the Old Testament, he says, I will, get, I, I will bring forth a new name. So, so many people get caught on the Yah and this. He says, I will bring forth a new name. Yahweh, Jehovah, Jesus, translated in English, which means Yahweh saves. <laughs> God saves. He says, the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. That's what save means. When you look up save in the Greek or the Hebrew concordance, it means saved. Redeem and saved are the same thing. And redeem them. He bare them and carried them all the days of old. He will carry us. He knows what we've been through. He knows the afflictions. He knows the things that come at us to our mind. This is why he gives us his word that we must renew in the word of God. Because what's going on in the world, it's nothing but spiritual wickedness and people turning from God and all of these evil going on. We can't let it consume us. We can't let fear in or we're going to start walking in those same things as they do. In John 14, 27, he says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. And this is my favorite part because he says, let not your heart be troubled. See, God, he's talking to our minds and our hearts. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Neither let it be afraid. Neither let it be afraid. So we thank the Lord for his word. We thank him for the opportunity for us to read it, for us to hear it, for us to know him. God loves every single one of us. And I don't care who you are or where you are. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm with you always to the end of the earth. I'm right there bring, trying to bring you home. Just got, constantly there trying to bring us home. Sure, you might have done some things. You might have fallen. You might have said some things. But God looks at our heart. He says, just in a true repentance, call out unto me. In the Psalms, we're told, and in the New Testament, in uh, Hebrews 10, uh, 17, he says, I will forgive and remember their sins and iniquities no more. No more. Turn back unto me, saith the Lord. So if the enemy is lying to you, if he's condemning you, or if you don't even know God and you want him to come into your life, you want him to come into your heart, I'm going to say a prayer and you can just repeat after me, but be sincere. It's between you and God. It's between you and him. Because he says it's by Jesus Christ alone. He is the only way for man to be saved. And if you truly just humble yourself and ask me, like a little children, he explains it, like little children, just believe Mark 5, 36, he says, just only believe, be thou not afraid, only believe. I will show you, you'll know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, that he is my word sent forth to you guys. So just humble your heart, let it be between you and him. Or even if you are saved and you just say, you know what, Lord, I want to rededicate. I don't want to allow Satan to bring fear in my life anymore. I don't I want to allow Satan to control all of this in my life. I want to receive your peace and your joy and your love and stop giving it away to the enemy or to people that want to condemn and control us. Amen.
So I'm going to say the salvation prayer and just humble your heart because he says in the book of Romans in 10, 10, 8, 9, and 10, he says, um, I'm going to go and read it to you guys because I want to give it exact today. And I usually quote it and, and just say it for you guys, but it's Romans 10. He says for um, Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10, he says, but what saith it that the word is nigh thee? I mean, it's near you. The word is in you. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith. Just believing in God, like I said, be not afraid, only believe. Which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, which is agree with, confession is agreeing with God that, that our sin is our sin and that he is the only way, with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with confession... By the mouth is unto salvation. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then verse 13 says, For whosoever, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done, you still have the chance right now. And this is what he's saying. Once you go, you don't have that choice anymore. You have the choice right now. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever. Male, female, child, anybody. He said, whosoever shall call upon me shall be saved. So I'm going to say the salvation prayer and just open up your heart and, and just let it be between you and God. Even if you're watching this a month from now, God is everlasting. He is God. He will touch you. He will heal you. He will show you that Jesus is the truth, the life, and the way that it was him in the fullness in the flesh so that we knew and we didn't have to walk in fear and doubt and lies anymore, hurting one another, afraid. Amen. So just bow your head and, and just repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come before you. I do repent. I do believe in your son, Jesus, that he died for me and he rose again on the third day, that he now sits at your right hand and he intercedes for me. Come into my heart. Guide me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. I surrender to you. Amen. It's that simple, you guys. He just wants us to turn our hearts back into him. He'll show you. That's the great thing about God. You know, some people say, you know, it doesn't matter because once you humble yourself and say, you know what? I am a man. Yes, his spirit is in me, but he is God. He knows. And you just humble yourself. He'll show you who he is. You will have no doubt. You will have no fear. You won't fear anybody. You'll know he is the truth, the life, and the way. And I'm, I have eternity with him. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to thank you guys for joining me here today. Uh, I pray that you received. If you have any word or testimony or something, you can always call us. You can call me. I'm 810-449-2247. You can call my grandfather, Evangelist Roy Castro. He just left last um, Sunday back to Texas and Mexico. They're doing revivals. He's going to send me some pictures and things. You know, because we give to children that are eating out of dumpsters and people that don't have Bibles in the mountains. And we just go all over um, wherever the Lord calls to help those who are in need. Because we are blessed to be a blessing, saith the Lord. Amen. So this is Faith and Hope with Charity, you guys. Follow along with um, jamforjesus.org. And if the Lord move on you, there's a little button there. You can make a donation to the ministry as well. And, and if you want to come on and, and share a testimony, something the Lord's done for you, we'll bring you right on the show. You have a show that you want to do of your own. The Lord moves on you that, you know what, I want to do a show. I want to do a show that helps people in this way. Or, or you want to do a show that shares the Word of God. Whatever it is, call us here. And, and we'll see what we can do to help and, and get you going on that. You can call the station, which is 248-247-5846. It's 248-247-5846. And we are live here every Friday at noon. Keep me lifted up in your prayers as I pray for every single one of you guys because that's what the Lord tells us to do. Pray for one another. Intercede. Prayer and supplication in all things, you guys. So I need prayer. You need prayer. We all need to just pray together and thank God for his mercy and for his grace. I love every single one of you guys, and I will see you live here next Friday at noon on allpointstv.com. God bless you all.